Hello everyone. Well, we're back again at the Jubilee Model Railway for uh, my second review of the year, which it will be this. This is the new uh, Hornby, if I just bring it up a bit closer, um, TTS Sound Class 37 in, uh, as you can see there, Network Rail Livery. Um, well, actually, this is a bit unexpected review, to be honest. Uh, I wasn't expecting this until, well, next month. The delivery on these was the 11th of February. So I'm not sure what happened there. Hornby must have got out at some out early, which is, well, which is brilliant rather than being late all the time. So today we're going to have a look at the engine, a bit of the detail, but there won't be a lot of it because as you can see there, this is a railroad model. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. So then we'll go in to the main part of this engine, which is, of course, the sound. Now, I have no idea what this is going to sound like. I have heard them one or two on YouTube, but you can never tell, really, from an actual video. So, let's open the box and see what this Hornby's latest TTS sound is like. Right, just open the end. This is just a simple Hornby box, which, well, as long as it keeps the, oh, a bit of sellotape stuck on there, that, ah, there we go. As long as it keeps the engine safe, does it matter? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's really, oh, god, that's really tight in this box, fair play. I don't want to come out. Let's try again. There we go. Right. Nothing in the box? Ah, yes, there is. Get rid of the box a minute. First of all, we've got... Uh, here we go, Class 37 Coco Diesel Electric. I'm guessing this is a little K manual, so... Yeah, you've got the general there and... Running maintenance and telling you, telling you all about it. Running hints. We open it up. We got where you put the lubrication look. Um, something about the sound decoder down there. And how you take the body off. Hmm. Right, that's that. Is there any other now this should have a sound mic ah, it does. Here we go. This is what it sh I should uh, should have in here. Class 37 unrefurbished DC s no sound decoder manual by Hornby, obviously. So this just will tell you, um, yeah, there's the list of the sounds it has. Wow. This locomotive appears to have 24 separate sounds. Wow. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to have that many. And then number 25 is a, um, yeah, AUX, look. 24. That's really impressive. I'm going to need this to have a look exactly what each one of these does. And then it, it goes on and there's a few other... Oh, upside down, does it? And a few other bits of information. But I'm not going to tell you all that will be here until next week. So we'll get rid of this. Now, the engine. Just in this simple polystyrene... Uh, let's get this thing out. Don't want to break anything. Come on. Here we go. So as usual, I'm going to put the engine on the track so we can have a closer look at it. So if I just pop it on the track, just underneath the camera, might make sure it's on the track. Right, move the camera down so we can uh, see what this 37 is like. Right, and here is the actual engine itself. Well, first impressions, it's not bad, is it? I know it doesn't have the fine detail, like a high-end Bachmann engine. It's not supposed to. You know, you can't compare this with the Bachmann engine for detail, because this is Hornby's um, railroad range, which are designed to be cheaper. So, let's have a little look around. There's the, f the front of the loco. They have got a smaller hitch on, which which is nice. That's a nice touch. We've got some buffers there. 
um, headlights. There's no other detail to speak of, to be honest, on the front. We just go around the side, we've got some grills there. And then, oh, 97301. I'm not up on the network rail um, locos, but shouldn't that be 37301? I, I don't know. If anyone knows, then yeah, please let me know, because I'm sure that would be 37301. Because this isn't a 97 class, is it? I don't know. Maybe they changed them when Netric Rail got them. Carry on down the side. We've got all the... we got the little window. Just there, the door. We've got all these um, grills and stuff. Got the Netric Rail logo sign. Looks pretty nice, actually. Really nice crisp lettering on that. And then we go down to the underneath. Well, that's not bad detail, is it? you got the fuel tanks by there. And then we got the other bogey set at the front. It's not looking too bad, I gotta say. Now there's no point going to the other end because it's going to be exactly the same. So if we go uh, up on top of the loco next, we got the uh, to the two horns. Well, that's not too bad. It's it's not as good, obviously, as I said, but it doesn't matter because this is the cheaper version. But yeah, that's all right. That's, they've done a little bit of detailing work. We come back, we've got some more detailing work, and you've got the two exhaust, which are actually our holes, which which just makes it that little bit better, doesn't it? And then we come to the uh, other end, and you've got the same two horns and the, the doors there. Just a quick look at that end. Well, the detail for a railroad engine ain't bad, is it? I'm really impressed. Now these hitches, now let me get the engine and move it and see what couplings they are. Um, are they NEM? I don't know, they, they look they look like it, but they it goes into a fixed... Let me just pop this down gently by you. Just trying to do this wall with one, two hands, it's never going to work. Because it's connected to the actual bogey set itself, but... Now this doesn't move at all, look. So I don't know whether you could call it an M pocket or not. But they're small couplings, that's the main thing. Um, the motor in this, apparently, is very good. Um, only, only this, uh, the, these, this bogey set here actually drives. This one is, well, it's a, it's a dummy, I suppose, it's no m m there's no motor in the middle sending two drive shafts to either end. That doesn't happen with railroad. The motor is attached to the top of this up in this area. And we have, um, yeah, we got uh, two, the two traction tyres. Um, mm, I've never been too keen on traction tyres because sometimes going over point work and stuff, obviously the, the, um, the metal part of the wheels is not touching the track. But, thinking about it, this engine is quite light. I wouldn't say it weighs too much more than a coach does. So it's probably going to need those um, traction tyres. You know, the paintwork is pretty good. It possibly looks a bit toy-like, If to be honest. It's, it's very bright and very, you know, but that's nothing wrong with that either. For the price, you know, doesn't matter. Um, this is going to um, my local model shop, MIB Models, to get weathered on Thursday. So hopefully I'll come back looking, well, dirty. It's what I want, to make it look a lot more realistic. So, we're going to get it onto the track over here. And we'll get to the main part and see what all those 24 sounds do. This should be interesting. Right, I'll put the motor bit at the front. Yeah, see, it is ve it is light, but I don't know if that will be a problem with those traction tyres or not. I think it's on the track there. So I'm just bringing the camera down here. That should be all right there. So, get my controller and get the manual so I can see 
what is going on. Right, obviously set on uh, number three, which all locos, new locos are. Right. Um, zero is put in on headlights. Right, okay. Ah, right. I didn't think it would. This engine doesn't have directional lighting, just to let you know. Uh, I don't know if it can be fitted. I will have a look into that, whether it be battery operated ones or ones worked off the co decoder. Right, F1 is turn engine on. But we're not going to do that yet, we're going to run through the sound so you can hear them properly without the engine running. So, uh, number two is high low horn, right. Well that's not too bad is it, it's quite loud. Quite loud. I'm not sure if that sounds exactly right to a 37, but yeah, it's pretty good. Next one is a low high horn. Ah, that's the other way around. It's quite good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, it's pretty good. Right, and then we go down to number four, which is brake squeal. Ah, that's like the P2. I guess it doesn't, um doesn't do it on its own. Right, number five is notch up. I'm not going to do that because you know exactly what that is. It just makes, you can make the engine go a lot louder while it's not going very quickly. Uh, six is notch down. Uh, seven is return to idle. You know what that is. F8. Oh, now I really like the sound of this. I've never seen this on a class 37, but it sure needs it. Number eight is thrash. Yeah, now that that is brilliant. Fair play. That I'm looking forward to uh, using that a bit later. Um, the, uh, F9 is a cold start, which I'll demonstrate that when we get the engine all uh, going. Right. Number ten is the compressor. So let's get uh, let's get that going. Yes, I have heard. 37's making that noise. So that was F10. Now we go to number 11, which is door slam. I'm guessing that's on the cab, not the uh, possible coaches it would be uh, carrying, but let's have a look. That's not too bad, is it? Oh, it's just... Uh, started up there, not sure why it did that. Sorry about that. My, con my controller's doing loopy things again. Now we go down to 12, which is, um, fan. Right. Ooh, that's, that's very loud. That is the fan. Then we go to 13, which is long horn. Hmm, another horn, right. Ah, that's just a single one, right. Number 14 is another horn, which I'm guessing is a longer one again, is it? Let's have a look. Yes, it is. Uh, number 15 is primer. Yeah, that's just before the engine actually starts up, I think. Now, F16 is slow flange squeal. Well, yeah, I, um, so let's get that uh, on for F16. Ah, yes. Sounds good, that. Right, now we go down to 17. Um, I have no idea what that says. Sphinx valve. Don't know if I said that right, probably not. But we'll put it on anyway and see what it is. Oh yeah, I've heard that, yeah. I mean, I have heard that sound next to a 37. 
Uh, number 18 is yet another horn. Gosh, they really like putting the, um, got a lot of uh, horn types onto these engines. So this is number 18. Ah, short one. So 19 is another horn. I'm guessing that's another short one again, is it? Let's have a look. Yes, not sure why you need so many different horns, but, you know. Then we go down to 20. Uh, wagons buffering. Yes, isn't that us? It buffering up. Uh, 21 is wagons clanging. Hmm, okay. Let's have a look at it then. Well, that just sounded like someone dropping a load of things off a table, to be honest. I don't know. Um, 22, alternative door slam. Right, okay, let's try it. Slightly different to the one that was further up. Not sure why you'd want to. Uh, number 23 is the guard's whistle. Now, if you remember from the P2, the guard's whistle on that was awful. So let's hope Hornby have listened to what people are saying and let's see if it's any better. So this is number 23. Well, it's, it's better than the P2. Still not brilliant, but it's a lot better than the P2. Now we come to the uh, last sound, which is number 24, and it says loco buffering. Surely that's the same as wagons buffering, really going to make the same sound. But we'll do, we'll do it anyway. That's a bit of an odd sound, that. Um, I'll just try it again, 24. I, I don't know. Slightly odd sound, that is. So, I think we should get this thing started up. First, I'm going to start it up normal without the cold start. Well, that's very, it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Really nice. So, now what I'm going to do shut it down and then we put the cold start option on. So, you press 9. And then press 1 afterwards, and then it'll start up like it was very cold. So press 9, and then 1. Oh, very nice, yes. So that is what um, that is. Right, now we got, I think we got to try it. Number 8, which is Thrash. Now I'm going to keep the engine stationary so we can hear what this is what this is going to be like so at the moment it's idling so I'm going to press 8 and see what we get yep that is perfect great noise from there press 8 again That is, un well, that's a fantastic feature to have on a Class 37. There's nothing better than have a 37 absolutely cane in it, is it? So, now we'll get to the running of the Class 37. So what I'm going to do, move it forward a little bit and see how it does. So, let's go. Oh, what happened there? It just sort of died there then, I'm not sure why. Oh, here we go. I don't know what that was. We'll try again. Hmm. It's possibly my dirty track. What I've done now is given it another, another good clean, and we'll uh, go for it, um, another try. I don't think it's the engine. I honestly think it's my track. Right, let me lift the camera. Come on now, 37, let's go. Yeah, 
there we go. Fair play, this thing does sound really good. I'm very impressed with it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go and uh, see it in a few other places uh, on the line. I'm going to use that thrash option a bit later, because actually at the moment it's not on. So the 37 is just coming around now. Uh, what I'm going to do, so when it gets to around this area, I'm going to put the um, press the thrash button and see, let's see the difference. So there you can tell the difference from its normal sound to the thrash sound. Love that, absolutely brilliant. Well, this 37, the Hornby one, ran really well round the track. Um, I think the f problems I had just to uh, start with was because the engine is brand new and not been run, run before so it was just a bit sticky maybe and it, it seems to run fine after that so uh, definitely no running issues with this TTS sound one that's for sure. So now you can see we've got another one of my 37's just joined in this is uh, a Bachmann 37. So I thought we'd do a quick, quick comparison with the sound chips and see exactly what is better and we'll have a look. So in this 37 we have um, a house sound chip in here. Over a hundred quid for the sound chip in here which is more than this whole engine. So it'd be interesting to see exactly um, what you get for paying £100 just for the chip. This should be really interesting. So I'm going to start this 37 up, do the horn and then shut it down. And then we move over to the TTS one and we'll do the same. So here we go. Fair play, that really does sound good. So let's move on to the Hornby uh, TTS sound one next. Just uh, connecting the wires here. Right. Let's have a go and see what uh, see what we it sounds like compared to the um, the other one. I got bad connection. I really need to get these connections sorted out. I don't know where. Uh... Right. 
Now I know the connections. Then, let's try. Um, that, well, I really do think the TTS sound sounds great. I don't know how it's coming across to you guys watching it, but, um, well, I'm going to say, why would you pay a hundred over a hundred quid just for the chip? I really, I, I'm, I don't know. I can't really answer that at all. This one might sound a bit better, but not a hundred quid better. No way. This is an absolute bargain. So let me just get this 37 out of the way. And just finalise on this 37. As I said, this 37 is the bargain of the century. I paid 89 quid brand new for this, and that's how much they are. You might get them cheaper from uh, local model shops, or I, I'm not sure. But it looks alright. I know it doesn't have the finer detail, uh, but running around track, you're not going to see the finer detail. So, to be honest, that doesn't matter, does it? The sound, I gotta hand it to Hornby, it's brilliant. To have the thrash option, that is a 10 out of 10 in my books, so that's really, really good. Uh, the running of the engine, it's fine. It might be a bit sticky when it comes out the box, but it wouldn't be the first engine to be like that. So, you know, I'm very impressed with what Hornby has done to this. Now, what I'm hoping Hornby are going to do, we'll see. As you know, Howe's Sound, which is in the other Class 37, you can buy the, sh the chips separately to put in any engine you want. Now, I don't think they will, but it would be amazing if you could buy the chip that's in this 37 and put it in any of them. You can imagine how cheap the chip would be, because you can buy the whole engine for 89 quid, which is less, as I said, than just the sound chip from other manufacturers. So, I think Hornby should go down that route. I think a lot of people would be really happy if they did. So... I hope you're listening home because I think you should go into making these chips so you can buy them without the engine. That would be brilliant. Now, any problems with the engine? Possibly a bit light, but that, that can be that can be changed. And there is no directional lighting, but that doesn't matter because this is uh, um, the Hornby Railroad Edition. So I'll hope to get lights on it and it will be weathered. So basically that is it for the TTS Sound uh, Class 37 review. I'm going to, you know, give them top marks. Really, really impressed with this. I am going to give it a 9 out of 10 for a railroad model. Now if this was a premium model, I wouldn't give it 10 out of 10. But it isn't. This is a good value engine that will run brilliantly around any layout. And maybe nice to double head them. You can imagine what the thrash would sound like with two of them. So I'd recommend you buy this engine. They are out of stock on Hornby at the moment. Um, although they weren't supposed to be out till next month. Don't ask. Just a quick thing before we leave. I did mention I was getting a new American Loco on my update. So I th just thought I'd show you. There it is. It is made by Intermountain. I know most British probably have never heard of that company. I didn't until I saw this. It's a BNSF 
uh, American logo. Absolutely outstanding this thing is. Sounds good, looks good, runs good. The three things that you want. Obviously this will be in the American running gala later on this year. You probably won't see it running until then. So thanks very much again for watching my videos. Please comment and you you see which one you think sounds the best. Possibly the 37, the, the 37 over here probably does sound a bit better. But I'll leave you to decide that. Uh, so, thanks for watching. And I'll speak to you all in another update or review very soon.